Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I want to plan, lesson plan in my teacher planner for our school next week. Um, I do have an entire playlist for our 2022 through 2023 school year. If you wanna know more about the curriculum, if you wanna know more about why we've already started school in June as we begin um, being year round homeschoolers, those videos will describe in great detail um, why I am planning today, <laughs> why we are moving into our second week of school. Okay, I'm really excited because we did do our first week getting to know the brand new to us curriculum, Heart of Dakota. Uh, my three little children who are four, six, and seven, I grouped together and we are doing Beyond Little Hearts for His Glory. And then my older two kids are uh, each in their own level. This format was actually how I laid things out, how much detail I had and how I divided things was really good actually. And so I'm, I'm going to copy a lot of this for next week. So let me flip over and get started. Um, I did put a couple of really important notes in already and I'm glad I did because I was almost ready to lesson plan and I remembered that one of my kids is doing like a three-day sewing camp kind of thing possibly a fourth day and so she's not going to be home um, to do any book work and that's important <laughs> because uh, I almost planned stuff for her okay so this is my a5 size plum paper teacher planner I think I have it linked in the description box um, I like to put washi tape on the top and I did pick some I just pick something that is colorful and fun and that catches my eye I don't really coordinate or or have any sort of like system. Um, we don't do book work on Fridays, so I white it out and then I can use it. I liked using it for supplies, that was awesome. And then we also don't do anything usually on Saturday or Sunday. Um, so I like to mark that out and put notes there. So I think that's it for white out. And oh, where's my washi cutter well I'll just use my finger okay so let's see I think for me it goes this direction so I just try to put it close to the top oh hang on I gotta be able to see here and hopefully not stick my head in so when I use this normal size washi tape it is so close to the top edge and almost covers the dates but I am okay with that um, this works just fine for me. So I have a huge washi tape collection. You can get a lot of these at like Hobby Lobby or something like that. Maybe Michael's or Joann's. And I just feel like it's a great way to add a little bit of personalization and a little bit of color to um, kind of a boring page. And then it doesn't take up a ton of room. Okay, now I need... Is this my pouch? Yes. So this is my pouch that has some sticky notes, um, my Zig Clean color dot markers. So I talk about what's in here in my um, unboxing and flip through and pen test video for this planner, which I did actually more in like March of last year or last school year. Um, so if you wanna see that, just, flip back it's there where do I put these there we go okay so we did a little bit of group work because I wasn't ready to give up my time with all of my kids I really wanted to start the day with all five of my kids together for right now we are just memorizing scripture our church actually does a yearly memory plan and we are following along with that uh, we take some time in prayer and then we do a read aloud that we all want to do for fun. Um, so I put, I ended up putting it over here because I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room uh, in the rest of my planner. I might incorporate a little Bible devotional, something that takes us about five minutes. Let's see. 
this is the one that we used last year. Um, I might continue using it because I like it, but it took a, a little bit longer than five minutes. I don't know. I haven't decided if I want to do something like this official during the summer months. I might save this for later in the year when we're doing full days worth of school. Right now, my goal is about 60, 90 minutes tops. Oops. So I just put it over here and this is my reminder that these are kind of like our group activities. Okay, so let me start with, I'm actually gonna start with my daughter because she's the easiest. Um, she's got the sewing class pretty much all day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and maybe Thursday, but I'm not sure. Um, since we are not doing full lessons, I'm actually going to give her a pass. She's going to skip Heart of Dakota this, this week. And I just want her to do a math lesson on Thursday and fix it grammar. So she gets a little bit lighter load as far as book work goes. I'm trying to think. Is there something? Where did I put her textbook? I actually originally set it aside because she's not really doing anything. So here's my fear. If we get started, it takes, right now, we're, it takes us a whole week to do all of these things. Mm, trying to think. Maybe I'll have her work on, oops, work on her history project that she actually started. That's what I'll do. So I'll, I will have her do one thing. She'll have time. Um, she can do her history project. Oops. History project. Oops, I don't have room to write that. If I want, I can erase it, but I, I know what that means. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I do want to take a marker that matches. None of these really match what I have. And I just want to kind of draw a line down here because it just really separated um, the lesson plans from my supply list. And that was really nice. Oh, so I should look and see if she needs any supplies for this history project. Okay. Um, oops, that was day three. Draw a backdrop. Um, she's already done the clay. So she really, she really just needs um, a large piece of paper and then normal art supplies like colored pencils and whatnot. Fine frame. Okay, good. So she's all done. That was fairly easy. Um, my son... I think I'm going to do my um, oldest son next. So he is going to be a little bit mad <laughs> that he has to do book work all week when his sister gets to do something a little more fun. So we are on unit one, day two. And I just want to skim through this, probably dividing it up pretty much as I had it last week because it seemed like a good fit. So let me move this off to the side so I can flip back and forth. So on Monday, he started with his history. He did his timeline. Actually, he ended up not having time and we did it on the last day. Um, so history, what is the history project? It says, um, use an atlas. There is kind of a craft slash activity that day. I, I'm gonna save that and have him do his project on Thursday as well. So I'm gonna put that as like his second thing. So history project, oops, history project. Um, on, oops, I'm writing it in the wrong box. Okay, I did not explain this part, but I need a couple of lines for each of my kids 
so I can spread out their math and language arts. So this, this would be their Heart of Dakota stuff up here, and down here is some of their additional math and language arts. So that's kind of why I thought I needed two boxes. I'm actually just gonna write project this time because it's the only project and it's always a history project. I don't think it's ever a science one. So it'll be easy to identify. Okay, so going back to Monday, he's gonna do the reading about history portion. And I want him to do uh, probably the research portion, which is they are studying the signers the, I think it's, what was it, the 26 signers of the Declaration? Did I get the number right? Um, the full title of the book is not written in this box today. So, yeah. I want him to do the research project. Um, I want to pause. And something else that's going to take a pretty good chunk of time is... the story time. So on Tuesday, I want him to do story time. Story time. And I want him to do what? What do I want him to do? Um... I think I want him to do the music. So it's music appreciation. So we'll do music and poetry. Is my pen running out of ink? So he will do those things. And then on uh, Wednesday, I want him to do Bible quiet time. And he has to do um, science. And both of those, let's see, what does it say? Mm, science might be an easier day for him. Uh, that'll be a whole other video sometime. Um, because we're kind of doing something else we're doing a different science, but we're trying to integrate it into the topics that he's studying. And it looks like according to this one, he needs to build and kind of do an experiment. And we don't have that experiment. So he may not have anything. It doesn't have anything to read. And so I'm not sure what I want him to do for that science. So yeah, anyways, I'll have to get back on that. That's a, its own separate thing, science for my son. Um, one of these days, I need to sit down with his curriculum. I need to read all the science exploration boxes and find out what topic he's studying that day and find the corresponding page in our science. So it's all physical science, a lot of inventions, a lot of, um, you know, electricity. Well, here, learning about pushes, pulls, newtons. Uh, and experiments with force. Um, so that's not specific to this curriculum. That's specific to like uh, physical science and things like that. And the curriculum that I chose has those things. It's just different pages and it's in a different order. So I have to create a spreadsheet um, that has the correct science for him. And I want to at least take some time to plan, to plan out like the upcoming either semester or entire year. And I will keep that as a spreadsheet because most likely my daughter, if she, if we use Heart of Dakota again next year, this is the grade that she will be in. This is the next one. And so I want to have that all prepared and she's going to use that science as well. So anyways, uh, back to this. So Bible science. So we need to do the inventor study. So he can do the inventor study here. So inventor um, so let me check here. Let me try to get as much as I can into the frame. Okay, I know you can't see everything. So we've got uh, the reading about history and the research, the story time, music and poetry, Bible, 
science, inventor, and project. And this box is the last one for math. Oh, he needs a day to do language arts. Um, so he has, which one is his? Oh no, I don't have them in here. Um, I can't remember. He has one of these grades. Well, here, uh, progressing with courage. I'm pretty sure it's his first half only progressing with courage last half. Okay. So he's going to finish that lesson. And he has no writing assignments. Okay, so let me get back in frame. Okay, so let's see. Bible and Science Day is probably his lightest workload day. So he can do language arts. So that's the actual language arts in the curriculum. Now I'm going to use these bottom boxes and history and research. This should be kind of a lighter day and this is a sort of lighter day. So I'm going to try, we're going to shoot for um, math. Now he may be able to complete an entire lesson or I'm okay with him doing half of a lesson and then finishing it. So it will be either one or two lessons. And then on this alternating day, I want him to do fix it, grammar, and fix it. Now, all of this is very flexible. Again, my goal is 60 to 90 minutes tops. Um, but based on how last week went, I think this is doable. So I have flexibility if for some reason he doesn't finish math on this day. Maybe we can roll it over here. Maybe we don't roll it over at all. And that's just all he completes. So I'm really okay with that. So that is his work. I'm going to put that aside. And lastly, because I'm juggling three kids with this, this takes a little bit more work. Okay, so we did this, we did the first two days. And so again, based off of last week, we can probably do two more days. Okay, so um, we need to start with history the history reading, because again, everything kind of spins off of that. So that gives the context for all of the activities and lessons. And I think there's like a hair stuck there. Um, what did we do last week? So we did history, Bible, geography, and music. Um, history. Uh, so we'll definitely do history and Bible. And music is a memory verse, the old Steve Green memory verse, which we love. One, two, three. And yeah. And then on the second day, the next kind of bigger subject is science. So we're gonna do science for sure. Um, and then we are gonna do story time which is kind of more like literature. And language arts. So, oh wait, do I have poetry on here? I don't. Uh, language arts and poetry. Hmm. I forgot that I maybe wanted to rethink this. I'm not sure incorporating copy work of the poem is a good fit for all three of my younger kids and I might wanna do something else. Um, and then I'm not really into spelling right now. I don't know. So for the next few weeks, we might not really do a whole lot of language arts, but because it, it's built into our phonics program so much, um, so my two littlest ones don't need this and even my, um, third grader has a lot of this incorporated into her Abeka. Uh, what's it called? It's not phonics. It's like phonics and language. Maybe it's kind of the transition where it's a little bit of phonics review and it's starting to introduce and do grammar. So I think I'm kind of doing my own thing. Actually, I'm going to erase this completely and we are going to do, 
uh, other things that I have and not that, but I do want to do poetry and read and talk about the poem. So we probably won't do the assignments. Is there an assignment? Read the poem, pausing after each line or two for students to add their own actions. Oh, that's cute. So maybe we'll start kind of like memorizing it. Okay, so we'll do that. Uh, math is on our own. Um, reading choices, this is built in. I, I will plug this in for my daughter. Okay, so that's all I need. Oh, wait, no, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I forgot. I need two more days. So the next day we have history and we have a history activity, which probably should be on the same day because they're very related. Okay, so on Wednesday, oops, am I still filming? Oh my goodness, this is long. That's all right. So we're gonna do history and we're going to do the activity and we'll do music because that's fairly simple and by now we should have that memorized anyways. Um, on day two, we will do uh, Bible. and story time and poetry so that should be it for taking the assignments from here and plugging them into my planner okay so the last thing i want to write down is um i've simplified things okay i need some of my color dots here um, hang on, I'm digging out my color dot pens. Oops, that's not one. Let's see. So I'm going to use this for my uh, oldest of the three littles. <laughs> for my seven-year-old, um, uh, six-year-old, and four-year-old. Wow, that took a lot of thought. Okay, um, I love these for color coding because not only do you uh, get this like perfect circle, but instead of having to write my kids' as names, um, I can use a color coding system. And when we're done with the assignment, I can actually do a check mark in the circle um, so it's functional as well as pretty and helps keep me organized in this tiny space. And I don't have to write my kids' as names or their initials or anything. So what this box is going to be for is all of their math and phonics related work. So let me unclip this. Um, I realized last week we were having a huge struggle um, because this <laughs> is for those three kids, their math and phonics. And this was a lot of books and I love all of our curriculum and I want to use them all. And we have a great system but juggling the books for three kids was a lot of work. So what I did, and I'm gonna try it this week, is I pulled out um, the pages from the workbooks that I want us to work on this week. So here is one day's worth of math for my seven-year-old. Here is a phonics page. We'll probably do front and back. Um, she has a handwriting page. She'll probably do the front of that. This'll be for another day. This front page is in our grammar. And so this is where like all of the language arts, we're kind of doing our own thing. Um, this is for one day and this is actually for a different day. Here's another day of math and so on. So what I like about this is um, my kids don't have to look in books. I don't have to be juggling quite so much. I can have them turn to the page. It's very easy for me to know how much in each of these kind of uh, subjects I want them to do. It's like a no brainer. It's kind of carried over from workbooks and curriculum we've used before. And with it stapled, it won't get lost. And when it comes time to do the page, we can just do like this and they can get it done. And then at the end of the week, I will possibly punch this and put it in their binders um, because I also have some workbook pages in the binders that I'll be bringing in on certain days for their subjects um, in the heart of Dakota. So it will just depend on the week. So I've got this one for my seven-year-old. This one is for my six-year-old. His is a little different. Um, so he has some handwriting pages. He has some math pages. Um, and 
he also is going to do, this is kind of a combination of phonics from Explode the Code and handwriting. Uh, just a few more things he can work on to finish up some books. And then uh, my four-year-old, I have been picking and choosing from several books for, oh my goodness, for over a year because she's just, you know, she's too young for certain things, but certain other things are too easy for her. So I have just pulled out a variety of workbook pages that she can work on. So this is all math. Um, she will, if she wants to do all of these in one day, that's fine. If she wants to do none of them, that's fine. Uh, about a page or two per day. Here's from her phonics. Here is um, some leftover Explode the Code. So it's a combination of handwriting and phonics and some more phonics and some handwriting. So things to keep her busy. So these are little packets all set up. So all I'm going to write is worksheets. And I'm actually going to use my abbreviation, worksheets. And this will just help me know which child I have helped. <laughs> worksheets. Um, worksheets. And I can check it off when I have helped that child through a few pages of those worksheets. So the goal would be to finish the whole packet by Thursday. Um, if we were in the fall doing our full workload, I would absolutely require that kind of like no matter how long it took because uh, it's a reasonable amount of work for us. But since we're in our summer schedule, I'm more flexible. Worksheets. Am I in frame <laughs> or did I move up? Okay, good. I'm still in frame. I thought maybe I had pushed the book up too high to show some of the workbook pages. Okay, and the last thing that I need to do, I almost forgot I'm going to use my dot again, is right here. Okay, so I am using the purple because this is only for my third grader, my seven-year-old. Um, and it's the reading that goes reading. I think that's what it was called. So there is reading choices right here and you can do this based on where your child is. You're either working on a phonics program, which I am for my four and six year old. They can't read yet. That's all they need to work on. There's also scheduled books for emerging readers. So they have a book list that if your child is ready for those books, you can work through those and buy them if you want. And I'm using some of that for her. And in the back, it gives you the schedule. One of the things that I really wanted to do because it's related to Bible is they have her read um, the Beginner's Bible is the one we chose. There's the Early Readers and the Beginner's Bible. And it has for each day a certain amount of pages. And then it has some comprehension questions for discussion afterwards. So I want her to do that in addition to other phonics and language arts things that we are doing. So um, she gets two days to work through one reading assignment, which is perfect uh, because she's a little bit of a reluctant reader and that fits her abilities better. And then it feel, never feels like we're behind. So just that child will be doing reading a little bit every day, not a full lesson. Okay, you know what I didn't do is check to see if we need any supplies um, for my kids. So let me get back to day three. We do have a science thing. Wait, unit one. Oh, yeah. Wait, where are we? Oh my goodness, I just realized I had the wrong, I had this science um, scheduled for this week and this is what I was gonna do with my kids this afternoon, but I had the wrong day. I need to do this science with my kids. Ooh, glad I saw that. So I already have the, I already have this supply. Um, you need some vegetable shortening. I just happen to have some random, uh, so vegetable, veggie shortening. And I don't think any of the other um, things. This is a history activity, but it's a timeline. And I've already printed this off. Thank you, Facebook group. 
and have this. So I already have that. So those are the two days. Oh, that's another note I need to make. Okay, so this is, um, this is day three. And this is day four. Because we're doing two full days worth of work in a week, unlike my other kids. And I need to pull this up for my son really quick because he has a project. Does he need some supplies? Okay, so unit one, day two, his project is an Eastern Woodland headdress. He needs red paper, clear tape, um, oil pastels. I think I have the oil pastels and the tape. I'm pretty sure I have zero construction paper. So I just need to put down construction paper, construction paper, which in general we should have for this year. Um, his research project is a research project thing. Okay, I think that's it. So if we do our read aloud, we will do sassafras. We're still working through that. Sassafras science. We will fit that in on the days that we can. If my daughter is not here, um, we probably won't do any of our group stuff, especially not the read aloud on those three days because she'll miss out on that and it's progressive, obviously. Maybe we'll still do... Uh, practice the verse in Bible and pray. And I did all of her stuff, his stuff. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that was a long video. I didn't intend it to be that long, but I love doing plan with me's and I am um, figuring out how this curriculum works and what we need. And so far I'm really enjoying it. So hopefully this video was helpful for ideas for general homeschool planning, as well as this curriculum specifically and that you enjoyed it and you'll join me next time. Thanks guys, bye.